provides and produces TV spots for air quality each year and has a weekly talk show on internet radio. He's a frequent, frequent contributor to local magazines and a shameless advocate for Tulsa. Michael was the keynote speaker at the first statewide sustainability conference in 2002 with a speech entitled The Stain About Sustainability, about trying to get coffee stain out of his shirt. It's actually very funny. Uh, and, you know, I've known Michael for decades now. We're that old, Michael. And uh, he has been a friend, he's been a neighbor, a boss, an advisor, but most of all, he's been a friend. So my honor is to welcome Michael Patton. Next door, to live 
live a healthier lifestyle, lose weight, amazingly similar to losing weight. You know, what age we are, we need to lose weight, we think, in our minds. Um, spend, save more, spend less. Pay down debt, interestingly. Young and the old don't care about paying down debt. Maybe because the old don't have debt. Maybe they don't have debt. Maybe that's the reason. But it's not a big priority to them. Um, certainly, they were the highest to enjoy life to the fullest. I don't know what age group you fall into for this. But I guarantee everyone in this room has one of these things in their lives they think they can do a better job at. So I think it's possible. These are the categories I try to make my list into. My physical health. I start with that. Physical is those things that we all know, we all talk about. The gyms are packed today, I'm sure. Tonight after work, they're packed again. We're all there. You, you missed the first couple of days. Don't feel bad. So if nothing else, start Monday. Think of this as a 2019 as a one-week free trial period. That you can today in the next four days figure out through your work, through your life, we you can start doing it. Start on Monday and do that with you. This is what spiritual help to me. It's the things I do. It's not just my faith and my community and my church. It is my volunteerism. It's the things I want to do in life that makes me have a better sense of my life and what my actions are, my contribution to society. Clearly our relationships for all of us. Um, investments are not just for money. They are truly your focus. I think more than anything else. To try to find that. Another great quote, and I have lots of these in here. Um, Bruce Lee, um, the actor. The successful warrior is the average man with laser-like focus. You can become like Bruce Lee, which is a really great famous star for this, <coughs> and fun and adventure, if nothing else. At my age in particular, fun and adventure have got to be my resolution. I've got to find ways to make my life, my day, my moments more fun, and to seek adventure this year. So we'll start with the resolutions. I really don't have 2019 resolutions, I doubt the or so. They go from. My first one is go visit three parks a week. Three times the same park. You notice I put the plus parks big so here, my wife's in the audience, she can charge plus parks. <laughs> so uh, she has the most parks in the region, <laughs> makes sense um, as well. Three times a week in your life. Maybe it's three times on Saturday. It's different parks you go to. Maybe it's the same one. Maybe it's not any more than visit. You simply park your car in there and look at the trees and the grass and the river for a moment in your car. Maybe you don't hike. You visit them. You find a way to bring that in. What parks do for us? I think I had this on my slide last year about visiting parks. What parks do for our mental health? What green space does for us? What the idea of the of children having these opportunities that reduces their stress and reduces all of our lives into a better, more focused way. I mean, green space can save humanity. We can find ways to, in our own communities, everywhere we go. So I made a list of 156 parks, if you want to do two, three different ones each week. I start off with these 52 parks. This is one of my favorites. This is a park uh, not far from here, right down the street at 6th and Main, uh, called Chapman Green at Land Legacy. My um, company was involved in doing We um, raised a bunch of money, got some state funds for Centennial, and um, borrowed a bunch of money from the bank. Built a park, sold it to the city for our bank note. A new park that now houses this wonderful art exhibit. Because we have this green space, this, this little place, a perfect little campus in the community that wasn't overdone, wasn't too many trees on it, there was a building to have, we could make it into a temporary playground for this wonderful art exhibit, adding art into our lives for downtown workers. Proud to be part of this. The second doorway to the, from the right is the one I worked on. It was an amazing part. I spent hours trying to bend sticks. Amazing, amazing frustrating when you break sticks trying to build something. Um, on this list of parks, however, are some wonderful parks. Braden Park. Our son came after Braden Park. So tomorrow we're going to find a tree in Braden Park for uh, my, my sister-in-law. who passed away that a couple weeks ago. There's some wonderful parks here of all levels. I look at some of these and think, oh, how wonderful these are. There's two parks named Gunboat. How do they have parks named Guns and Boats and Tulsa? <coughs> so they're right downtown. And there's a north and a south there. Pretty underused parks. If I go further, 52 more parks. I look at some of these ideas, some of these McClure Park. The very first Earth Day, I organized a litter cleanup at age 11, 1970. I was asked by the city of Tulsa, the mayor wrote me a letter, got my friends to get back to McClure Park. The very first Earth Day. To me, that park was the Garden of Eden. It's where I had tadpoles and threw frisbees and met my friends and 
for the people in the trash can. I was amazed how nasty parks can become who took responsibility for them. When you visit those parks, pick up some trash on the way. Also in this is some amazing other ones. I look at this Mohawk Park, one of the largest urban parks in America. An amazing resource there, filled with not just golf courses and zoos and soccer fields and Oxy Nature Center, but a big park to camp and fish. I, I took my kids fishing for the first time in one of the golf course holes at Mohawk Park. It wasn't in Brayden Pond, which you can fish as well, but there were bigger fish on the Flat Rock Creek by there as well. And even more parks. We live in Tulsa Parks, we need those to go down to the big ones now. Gathering Place, the River <laughs> Parks, the incredible county parks we have, like the Fortune as well. And I guess we have the bottom is one you need to visit. There's these other ones, this Ray Harrell National uh, Nature Park in Broken Arrow, which is stunning, this beautiful wide trail to walk through there. The Keystone Ancient Forest. Think about it, that's probably the only thing in Oklahoma you can actually use the word ancient in its name and get away with it. This is an incredible <laughs> park. It's not open very often. Only about 30 times during the spring do you actually go in and hike. I hope Sage Space can find a way to make this more accessible by maintaining that ancient forest theme to it. Number two, stress will kill us. Stress is a poison in our lives, in every sense of the way, in our nervous system, in our brains, in all of our lives. In 2019, I'm going to try natural remedies for stress. Maybe it's exercise. It's probably not running. If you see me running, call 911. <laughs> <laughs> spend time with friends. Chew gum. I read this on the list. This is from Healthline.com. Take a yoga class. I love yogi. He's smarter than the average bear. I really like it. You can do this and practice these things. Spend time with a pet. I really think it's fun. Um, what's, the, what's the dog's rules? Um, you can either eat it, play with it, or pee on it. So <laughs> take life that way. You can do these things. Let's stop and get stressed. Or if you are, find some regular cure, a natural cure. Maybe it's a piece of chocolate. I mean, stress go backwards is dessert. Maybe that's your answer. We found a way to find your answer to deal with this. Some way, practice this mindfulness and find ways to do this. Look at this image. I'm not how well it shows up here. This is an image done by an artist that was supposed to be a stress test. Is it moving to you? If it's moving, really focus on it. Now stop and take a breath. Did it stop moving? It's an optical illusion. The black and white in, in abstract colors. A simple test of your stress. Am I stressed? To find out if you are or not. And look at this image and find ways. You can find this online. There's supposed to be some, you know, they, there was a big <coughs> news about it. It was done by some neurologist. No, it was an artist. But it works. Number three, eat healthier. Man, this is hard. I'm trying to eat healthier. I used to be way heavier than I am now. I'm doing a lot of positive things by avoiding from foods. I found this simple slide. I tried to make this uh, how the vegetables were all happy and the fast foods all sad. So my mental imagery there, you know, I made her visual. I tried to make myself I eat healthier, make me happier in a very, very simple way. So, um, and really, it's the things I eat. I mean, I'm sure it's portion control and timing and all these things as well. But, Look up these things. Google the benefits of ginger or garlic. Garlic, I mean, it does an amazing number of things. I was trying to make a list of all these different things and different websites claim on garlic. Um, obviously, it's nutritious with almost no calories, first of all. It uh, works for the heart. It reduces blood pressure. Lowers um, um, lots of issues for us internally. Kimchi and sauerkraut. I mean, kimchi fries, they sell here, it's one of the most popular things in the food truck world here, and sauerkraut. And sauerkraut is a natural digestion that does everything. I mean, there's claims of it fighting cancer. I mean, it fights diabetes because it lowers glucose in you. I mean, I also believe in preservatives. Sometimes the right person gives medical advice. You know, our bodies are like meat, uh, I figure. So uh, you have the preservatives and kimchi or sauerkraut together, and you go have a ballpark hot dog, call me in the morning. Probably be fine with that. The only thing I can't do probably is yogurt. I'm really trying. I know my family likes yogurt and stuff. It's just, it's a lie. I put mean, yogurt in my refrigerator and it's bigger. I mean, it's like bean sprouts. I don't eat live food. I try not to eat live food. So I have not had yogurt yet. In my 2019, I'm going to try yogurt in some capacity. It's good for me. These are natural. How can you go that many years in life? Natural ways. Number four, start making lists. This is actually a snapshot of a, a Wikipedia page. 
there's actually a list of lists of lists, if you can search for that. And there is actually this thing. But making a list makes you better. Makes you better organized. <coughs> makes you less stressed. I this I wrote it down. I have a list to go from. And it could be we must prioritize. So we can find ways to do that. Make lists. Maybe it's a list of parks you're gonna go visit. Maybe it's the things you're gonna try to do to be better. And list of the activities you have to do in your job and career will make you a better employee. Will make you better. Now I have a list of what I have to follow. A to-do list matters. It leads, loses a lot of translation if you try to think of it in your mind forever. Oh, I'm so smart. I'm 60. I'm not that smart anymore. I'm losing it. So make a list. And of course, my favorite list is not a bucket list, but the other kind of list. I think in 2019, Make a list of things you'll never do again. That's way more important than things you want to do before you die to me. Way more important. These are things I probably, I'm going to say right now, 2019, I'm not going to do the team more. I'm not going to dress like a caveman. I did that once. I was great. I was great. For instance, yeah, but I do. I'm not going to sleep on the ground anymore. I'm sorry. I'll get a cop. I'll get up in the hotel room. I'll do something else. Definitely not going to buy furniture in the assembly. I'm not even going to work with the tools. I, I have a toolbox with different size sticks. I just poke stuff down. So that's all I have. I can't do it. I'm also going to change that I'm not going to allow people to be racist around me. I have a couple of examples of this. I, I like to get punched too. Because I had someone say something that I thought was very negative in a public place, and I didn't allow it anymore. And I'm not going to allow it anymore in my community. I'm not going to clean the fish either. So I love the fish. And I'll give you the fish. You'll be annoying. <coughs> Be happy. Find ways every single day. Every day, Google this phrase. Jokes about meaning. Jokes about parks. Jokes about sustainability. Jokes about anything. I'm telling you, you can select your phone, whenever you're bored, right now, good time, probably. Pull it out and figure it out. Just Google jokes about, and you'll be amazed how nice and how funny that is by reading other people's humor. I mean, maybe you can't listen to talk radio comedy central all day long in your life. But I'm sure you have some focus at some point where you can bring in a little bit of humor into your life. By simply doing whatever it is. I, I love the Google. I mean, this is our like, 13th year with the Google on our planet. I really like it. I keep going to Google because it drives my daughter crazy. Um, so um, you really can find ways to bring just a teeny bit in a couple moments of your time some humor. And also like quotes, Google quotes about. There's not a single topic here. Many of the things I talk about in my regular life, my inspirations, the phrases I believe in, the quotes I use in my speeches every day are from other people who are much wiser than me. And I share that with me. And you can, maybe it's not quotes, maybe it's poems about in your life. Maybe it's something that images about because you're very, very visual. But find out, find these other ones and learn from them. That's what we have. We have that. We didn't have before. I'm so proud that my kids are going to be so much smarter than me because they have this information at their fingertips. We will never own this like a pea for Canada books anymore because we have to Google. I mean, it's so much better than our lives. But you can find, and these are some of my favorite ones, these last ones in particular. I really like Tupac is really great for quotes. And uh, Balthazar Gracian is one of my favorites of all time. Um, so he, he said, uh, better bad with the world than wise alone. So I really love it. Number seven, borrow and set buy. Very sustainable movement here. Why are you buying stuff? Why are you buying everything? You really need it. I use this punch bowl as my example. My great aunt May taught me. One of the smartest, best people in my life. Um, if she'd been alive, she'd be well over 100 now. Taught English for 40 years at university level. She decided she had X number of things in her life. She didn't count them. But she was not getting any more than that. X plus one was wrong. She was so smooth. I'd say, Aunt May, I brought you this birthday gift. And she'd say, uh, I've got this book for you. Slide it up and out. The number of things in your life with that day forward constant. X number of things. She told the theory about a punch bowl. She said every person who got married in the 50s and the 60s got a punch bowl. And you didn't use it. And if you really need one, some of the family has one. Do you really need to have all these things? Do you really need, I mean, all these things? Maybe someone has them. Maybe you can find a way to do them. And also, I put some rules here. Be receptive. Um, be ready to reciprocate if you run things in people. My sustainable tip for 2019 is that I'm going to make a big effort to share a ride. I'm going to try to find a way to not be behind my car, by my 
myself every day. I, my car is nine, ten months old with 24,000 miles. I travel the state a lot to see my son play games in, in college and stuff. And I'd probably say 97% of the time, it's just me. It's a nice car. It fits by. I don't think about that. Why would we not find ways to carpool? I've read a lot of studies about this. We, I worked on, on those over for a long time, trying to get people the right places and stuff. We tried to learn people's mentality, why we want to do this. And then who, more likely, are we to ride for carpool with? And I say, point I mean, focus on that. Find the person in your life that you would share a ride to. Maybe it's not a neighbor, maybe it's a coworker. Find a day, one day we can do this. One day a week, one day a month, we're going to try to ride the bus. I love the scene from Wayne's World where the poor guy is singing the Bohemian Rhapsody in a carpool. I, I love the Dagwood Bus that cartoon for people my age, old kid, when every day there was a scene of him trying to catch the carpool for the late to work and stuff. They shared that opportunity. They shared that time. I, I wish the local radio stations would have a, a morning, right along, sing along, song of the day, and carpool, day along with that, keep going for that and play. And in the bus, we're making rapid improvements. Do we do a rapid transit bus on Peoria and Lutter Street in our community? Yet our ridership is dismal. We're a city that's big enough where we demand transit, but not so big that we have to use it. So we have to make a decision. Are we going to do this or not? Fixed routes or not? I, I, I'm very hopeful that the new areas are putting trans, transit route we take it over. But in 2019, try to see us. Right once sometime. Find a way. Our buses are beautiful, energy efficient, excellent. It's not like your Central American who has a chicken in a cage right alongside you. They're good buses. So in 2019, find a way. I'm afraid that we're just going to catalyze each other. But now I see that Uber and these incredible apps on our phones for ride shares and stuff may change our world. Maybe we won't have to spend all this money widening roads in the next bond issue next November when they come and say do this. Maybe we won't have to because. Now we don't have a three-car family with a two-car family because ride share works. Maybe soon we can have this. Less cars on the road makes our community safer. Makes everything we do safer. So find a way to have less cars, less vehicle models travel alone behind the steering by yourself. Number nine, be a better shopper. I used to love to give grocery store tours. Years ago, I did these for a long time. Of course, you should do one of these. You should organize a day where people follow me behind the resource. I do about 20 people through an aisle of the store. They meet shallow basically with props, you know, all kinds of jokes about different things. Um, so, and uh, you can learn a lot. But there is probably not more sustainable act than when you spend money to do it sustainably. Every dollar you spend is a vote for something. Why not for sustainability? Why not? If you look at the produce here at the bottom, very simple. Remember these things. If it's a four-digit code on the produce thing, it's conventionally grown. <coughs> if it's five digits, it's either GMO or organic. Nine means organic. It's very simple. Learn where your produce comes from. Be responsible with that. I say also, though, that know what you already have. You know, all those years I organized a household hazardous waste collection at the fairgrounds. You know, we took five to 6,000 cars a year through there uh, for 20 plus years. I was amazed when people brought them stuff. They had three of them. And why? Yeah, well, we kept seeing ads, we kept buying more ant killer. Yeah, well, every time. <coughs> every time there's 12 minutes of paint in their home, they're never used again. We don't know what we have. We just go to the store and think, yes, I'm probably going to need this. And now you realize what we have under the shelf in our garage already. So know what you have. Know what a good price is, sustainably. I have to learn my threshold of pain, my threshold for price. I'm willing to pay more for better things. I'm willing to pay 10% more for organic carrots because that's about what they charge. Okay, apples are 100 percent more. Maybe I won't have apples. They go try to buy conventionally grown. Maybe find a better way to do it. So I have to know that. But also think of the lifetime of the product. You have purchased this and that package. It is now your responsibility. How it is used, what happens with that for the entire life cycle. How are we going to store this? What is the best way to be an environmental shopper? What's the best way to buy orange juice? The frozen can, the jug, or the carton? The carton is not recyclable. It's mixed plastics is the worst choice. The jug is recyclable. And the frozen is probably the better choice because it's less square into the packaging. I'm a responsible shopper. I have my own pitcher at home. I don't need to have another pitcher in my home every time. Be a responsible shopper. Find ways to look at everything you spend, shopping in every part of your life. You can be responsible more.
sustainable. Number 10, fight for water. So please let our dignitaries here today do this. If there is one thing on your agenda in 2019 environmentally in the state of Oklahoma is the fight for water. It is everything we have. It is the aquifers, it's the rivers, the streams, it's everything we do. Next week's speaker talking about plastics is going to show this plastic item that's bigger than now Texas or something. It's ridiculous how big this thing is being. It's out of control. We have to fight for water. We have to figure out what we have. We are blessed in Oklahoma to have this. We are blessed. I, I'm opposed to selling our water to Dallas for development. But that water goes our jobs. I'm opposed for those reasons alone. But I'm, I also work in Tulsa's watershed, or New Chains Papanoff, protecting the chickens. There's a real threat of chicken farms in our lives. You've seen the press. This audience is very well informed over that. 95 new permits this year in Delaware County alone? I mean, maybe I'd have to stop buying chicken. Maybe I have to go with my pocketbook and find a way to not do this anymore. As much as I like chicken, maybe I have to say no. Find a way to say no. Maybe we need to find a big picture solution to this. A penny per bird tax that goes back to protect the water. So there's something we have to do for this. We have to fight for this. But I'm saying be responsible for water, for and with your water. Do not waste it. We are blessed in Oklahoma. We are blessed in Tulsa. We won water tasting awards again this year. We've not had water rationing in our community since the 1980s. Tulsa was had foresight. They built this beautiful pipeline, the Lucius Pavanon, got those rights and kept it. Tulsa has a wonderful <coughs> abundance. We we're able to get industry here because we have this incredible quality of water in our community. We have to protect it. We have to be responsible for that. I shudder to think what happens if the Colorado River fails and what happens in California. I, I'm afraid to use water intensive products. I mean, we, my wife had this argument. She loves avocados. People throw away a lot of avocados. It takes 12 gallons of water to grow an avocado. Get an avocado, you better do it. <coughs> so, my, we buy this avocado probably dip in Aldi's we like. It's just fine. So, I'm more responsible. I'll use every bit of it. I have to be responsible. How I use it, what I do with it, and fight for it in every sense of the word. Number 11, go to new places and make new friends. And I'm here to announce, I feel like a couple weeks ago, a new social drinking club I started called Bourbon Tulsa Weekly. You're welcome to join us on Tuesday nights. Our first one's next Tuesday at the Press Club. Uh, we have a whole list. It's a Facebook page. You're welcome to ask to join. Uh, we have 150 people joined in two weeks. Um, the idea is to promote local restaurants. I'm not a big drinker. I probably had 30 drinks last year. My wife and I have been married 22 years. She's never seen me drunk. I have been. Not with her presence. I mean, I've been to fishing trips. Don't get me wrong. But uh, <laughs> go to new places. I'm going to try to promote a new restaurant, a new bar, a new place every week provide some safe place. If you're new to town, if you have some co-workers, you can say, we should have a drink after work someday. Come on Tuesdays, find me. There's a Facebook page for other locations. I think it's important that we do this. I, I love this. Corey makes us all introduce ourselves before this meeting starts. It is all about relationships. It's not about politics. We have to remember that. Who we know and who knows us is what really matters in politics, but nothing else. Last year I used this line from Aeneas Nin, this uh, feminist author from the 40s and 50s, that when you meet someone, a new world is created. A world that only existed because you two met. It becomes only when you two make it. Everything you drag into your gravitational pull becomes your world, the two of you. Go to new places, make new friends. For number 12, I had a bunch of them. I couldn't decide. I couldn't find all these. I'm trying to act most of these. What I recommend you do is you stare at this list until something pops off to you and says something to you that, oh, you know, that's a good idea. I could do that. I can find a way to do something in like this every day in my life. Or for 2019. Remember, this is a one year resolution. My wife has been talking about walking, and she's found a bunch of good studies about what walking does for your life and stuff. And I, one of the reasons I've lost weight is because I decided to walk. Uh, I was inspired by my sister, who instead of going to the gym and joining Disneyland, because she lives in Orlando, and just walks around Disneyland and has lost more weight. So I do that now with baseball. So I attended 38 baseball games last year in St. Louis and Tulsa. Walk around stadiums, counterclockwise, clockwise. So it was a great weight loss thing. And about the same price as the gym. <laughs> Even more, accept change, especially in large denominations. So dream bigger. I like all these. The last one here I probably could never do learn patience. I'm in such a hurry to learn patience. <laughs> it's not going to happen. I know that. But also conquer fear. I'm going to Las Vegas. My wife has made a vacation once a while in Las Vegas, and I go by myself. 
And I looked at that in the sky walk. So I'm so afraid of heights. And there's a place that's two hours and 16 minutes away from my hotel in Las Vegas where you can walk across this glass floor of the Grand Canyon. It's like 80 bucks, so I probably won't do it. I'm so cheap. But I have that fear. And I'm going to face my fear for 2019. I'm going to find something I'm afraid of doing. I'm going to not do it anymore. Or I'm going to say, I'm going to do this right now. I'm jumping out of my car. I'm going to do this thing, whatever it is. These last three slides are the same three slides I used last year. I hope you'll find a day. I hope everyone in this audience has done nothing more than to educate you about the 2019 and make a promise to yourself is important. And I hope I've entertained you enough to think, I'll do this too. So I hope in 2019, you're going to find something that you do. This happens to be a picture of Woodward Park, one of the most gorgeous parts in town. Every year, my family took Easter pictures there. There's embarrassing pictures of me at a very early age, um, catching tadpoles in this pond. But I really believe in 2019, I'm going to find a list of things that I'm going to really try. And that's the key word here, is to try. A resolution doesn't have to be this formal act of defiance. It's a personal promise to progress your life that you try, try to do something. Just equally, you can say, I'm not going to do something. It is harder to say no. It's harder to stop the things we don't have to do. It's very, very difficult. Very hard. Find one. I know it's bad. Every year I give a thanks for Lent. I'm not Catholic. I don't think 40, years of, 40 days of no cheeseburgers makes me closer to God. But it makes me stronger. Because I did it to myself. No one knows I cheated. I had this now internal strength that something I knew was too easy, too good, or too bad, or I did too often. So I stopped doing it for 40 days every year. I think there's something to learn. It's been very difficult trying to find the right thing. I, I'm amazed how much I don't know. I gave it pork one year. I had no idea that I it was pork. So disappointed. So <laughs> so 40 days. Oh my God. <laughs> and finally, this is my slide. Um, I hereby resolve. Hereby resolve. This picture is Brain Tom. Um, one of my resolutions is to not do fights anymore. I don't want to throw my fist in anger or brandish a weapon against um, for any reason out of anger. If you make me mad, I'm going to throw you in this pond. So I did it before. So you used to. Um, it is a magical place. But I do believe that you can go and find this piece of 2019 in reflection. You can find your list and become a better person for you in 2019. I'm not saying 2018 was a terrible year. It wasn't best for a lot of us for a lot of different reasons. We had personal tragedy in our lives in a lot of ways. But I think overall, it made me realize that in 2019 I'm going to be a better me. I hope this speech reminds you also to smile and find ways to do that. I'll, and I'll end with this last quote from Benjamin Franklin. Be at war with your vices. Be at peace with your neighbor. And every new year, find you a better person. Happy New Year. Thank you all.